Hey guys, so I'm back and today we're going to continue with the road known as calculus and we're going to move along this journey and today we're going to be doing some more limits and how to solve limits algebraically rather than using a table of values or a graph. And we're also going to start this new topic known as the derivative and that's going to encompass all the ideas of limits that we have used up till now. But we'll save that for later and talk about it after we're done with everything else. Okay, so first comes first, I want to talk about this definition that I didn't talk about in my last video. And it's known as the definition of continuity. And essentially what it states is that if a function is continuous, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So, if it's continuous, the limit of f of x will equal f of a as x approaches a. Now, if you didn't understand that, let's take a look at a graph. So, we have this graph right here, and we get notice we have the function f of x, and we have this point x equals a, which corresponds to a comma f of a. And we notice that f of x is continuous at x equals a. And we want to find this limit as x approaches a of f of x. Well, if we follow the definition, because this function is continuous, this would just equal f of a. It's as simple as that. There's not much to it. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So let's say we want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 9x minus 1 all over 5x minus 1. Well, this is just simple. We can notice that if we plug in 1 in each one of these, we'll get a defined value and therefore f of 1, it does exist and f of 1 is continuous. It's, the function is continuous. So, if we just plug in 1 for each of the x values, we will get 1 minus 2 plus 9 minus 1 all over 5 times 1 is 5 minus 1. And if we add, subtract, and then divide, we'd get 7 over 4. And that's the answer to this question. Really simple, I know. Okay, so now let's move on to something a little bit more difficult, not really, just a little bit more, we haven't seen this before. All right, so we want to solve this limit algebraically. We don't want to make a table of values. We don't want to look at a graph. We just want to solve it algebraically using algebra. And we're going to use some algebraic tricks. Algebraic magic, algebraic gymnastics, whatever you want to call it. We're going to factor, we're going to, we're going to multiply by the conjugate, we're going to do all sorts of stuff, anything to make this work. So if we take a look at this question, it's the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x squared minus 2x minus 8 all over x plus 2. And if you plug in negative 2, you'll notice that you get 0 over 0. And that's a problem. <laughs> it's an indeterminate form. So what are we going to do? What type of algebra can we do to solve this limit? You may be asking that very question. Well, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to tell you, why don't you factor the numerator? So let's factor the numerator. What would we get? We'd get this equals the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 times x minus 4 all over x plus 2. And what do you know? You see, we have an x plus 2 in the denominator and we have an x plus 2 in the numerator. So what's going to happen? These guys are going to cancel. And we're going to end up having the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x minus 4. And this we can do. There's no problem. We don't have a 0 in the denominator. So this would just equal, plug in negative 2, negative 6. And that's our answer. So if you want to take a look at it, here it is. 
Okay, so now that you know that we can factor the numerator, or if we won't, we can factor the denominator if the problem comes out to be like that, and we can cancel these values that prevent us from originally not being able to solve this limit. Okay, now let's take a look at our second problem. For our second problem, I have this limit set up here. It's the limit as t approaches 0 of the square root of t squared plus 9 minus 3 over t squared. Now, let's plug in 0. What would we get? We'd get t, t squared, where t is 0, so you'd get square root of 9 minus 3 over 0 squared, which is 0 over 0. Once again, we have the same issue here. It's an indeterminate form. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do something relatively simple. We're going to multiply by the conjugate. So, let's take a look at this. When we multiply by the conjugate, we're going to multiply by the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3 over the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. And because we're multiplying by the same thing in the numerator and the same thing in the denominator, that's just the same thing as multiplying by 1. So we're not changing anything. Okay, so what would we get? If we multiply the numerator out, we would get t squared plus 9 minus 9. And when we multiply this guy out, we would get t squared times the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. We'd have that guy. And this would be the limit as t approaches 0. Okay, now what does this equal? Well, if you notice, the 9's will cancel, and we'd get t squared over t squared times the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. And we'd be taking the limit of that. Alright, we know that these guys cancel, so finally we'd get the limit as t approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. And if we plug in 0, we get 1 over square root of 9 plus 3, which is equivalent to 1 over 6. And that's your answer. So if you notice, by multiplying by the conjugate, we were able to change this function, which originally had an indeterminate form when we tried to take the limit, into something that gave us a defined answer. Okay, so if you see a function that's something like this, that has a square root in the numerator or denominator, you would have an idea would be to multiply by its conjugate, and you might be able to solve that limit. Okay, now let's take a look at another example problem. So this is more of review from last, the last video. Uh, I put it in because I thought it was a good question, so let's take a look at it. If f of x equals the square root of x minus 4, if x greater than 4, and x 8 minus 2x, if x is less than 4, determine whether the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x exists. Well, we're going to have to remind ourselves of a certain definition from our, my video last time. And what was that definition? Well, if you think about it, you'll figure it out. But for those of you who forgot, it's essentially the limit from the left must equal the limit from the right in order for a limit at any point to exist. So if we notice, we have one function on the right side and one function on the left side. And when we take this limit, we'll see that the square root of x minus 4 will be on the right side and 8 minus 2x will be on the left side. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. Remember that plus sign means right 
of f of x. And when we plug that in, plug that into this function, x equals 4, the square root of 4 minus 4, we'd get 0. Now, before we do anything with the next limit, from the left side, we, have, we know that in order for this, in order for this function, to, I mean this limit to exist, then the left limit has to equal the right limit, and therefore this left limit also has to equal 0. So let's just do it. Limit as x approaches 4 from the left side, remember that negative means from the left side, of f of x. And if we plug that into this function, we get 8 minus, plug in 4, 2 times 4. So 8 minus 2 times 4. That's 8 minus 8, and this equals 0. So 8 minus 8 is 0, and square root of 4 minus 4 is 0. And now that we see the, the right limit equals the left limit, the answer to this question will be yes. If you didn't understand this, please go back and relook at the problem and rewatch this explanation. I'm sure you'll get it after a second try. Okay, next problem. So we have this limit right here. The limit as h approaches 0 of 3 plus h squared minus 9 all over h. And if we try and plugging in 0, we have a 0 at the bottom and we'll have a 0 at the top. So in determinant form, we have to do some stuff. Now let's try and expanding this 3 plus 8 squared right here. So if we expand it, we'd get 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 9 all over h. And we're taking the limit as h approaches 0. Now if you notice, these 9's right here will cancel, they're gone, Bye bye Alright, so what we have left is the limit as h approaches 0 of 6h plus h squared over h. And if you notice, we can cancel some h's out. If we factor an h out of this, it'll cancel with the denominator. So this will go, this will be just h, and this h will be gone. So we'll just have the limit as h approaches 0 of 6 plus h over 1, and that's obviously just 6. If you plug in 0, 6 over 1, that's 6, and there's your answer. Take a good look at it if you haven't understand it yet. Pause the video, try and figure out what I did. All I did was expand, cancel, cancel, and voila, our answer. And that's essentially it. For limits, what you want to do, the idea is to just try and do some algebra if it comes out to be an indeterminate form and make that indeterminate form into some other form which, where you can solve the limit. And as you saw it before, you can factor, you can multiply by conjugate, and you can simply expand. So yeah, now let's move on to that derivative idea that I talked about at the very beginning of the video.